The top five things all ADHD parents do to get in their own way. One, they fly blind. Two, they silence the voice. Three, they compare themselves. Four, they forget the father. And five, they do it alone. I'm Coach Bruce, and I'm a life coach for ADHD parents. And I'm going to get into these top five things. It's an unpopular opinion that we all do anything alike. I don't care. There are five things that we have all done at some point and continue to do at some point that are getting in the way of us living our best possible life, being our best possible uh, selves as parents, having our best, our best possible success in business, being the closest we could be to the Father, to God, whatever it is that you believe. But to me, it is having that relationship and that understanding, that knowing of God. And finally, having the body that we know that we should have and that makes us feel alive and awake. So the first one is we fly blind. This is one that I can, I cannot think of an ADHD parent that I know does not struggle with. Having a clear vision of what they want the future to look like. We get so conditioned as ADHD parents to stop dreaming, to stop picturing what it could be like, to stop having random visions of what we might achieve and just show up and do the same thing over and over again. Just go to work, check in, you know, punch or punch the clock, do the work that's put in front of us, come home, make dinner, feed the kids, put them in bed, watch a show for an hour or two go to bed, restart. That is not the life we were put on this earth to live. It's not it. But we all get so uh, complacent. We get so complacent. We get so sedated, pushing down who is really inside of us that we just accept this life is okay. And we stop dreaming and having a vision of a compelling life that we actually want to live and go toward. Two, you silence the voice. You stop listening to the person inside of you that urges you to do something different. That, that impulsive voice that is often uh, non sequitur and is thinking of things that, are, that almost seem ridiculous. There is something there. There is that, that voice inside of us is there for a reason. And whenever we are healthy and whenever we're actually feeding that voice and we are communing with it in a healthy way, it's going to guide us to special things that are only meant for us. But if we are silencing that voice, we are cutting off a huge part of what is meant for us because it is only for you. Nobody else can get that. It is meant for you. And if you can't listen to your inner voice, you will not be able to find it. And that is a major struggle that all ADHD, because we've been told not to do anything outside of the norm, not to, you know, not to go against the system, not to push the boundaries, not to test the limits to do exactly what you're told, exactly the way you're told. And that has never been right for us, but we've broken ourselves to do it. We've stopped listening to the voice so we could show up and fit in with the neurotypical standard. And then number three, we compare ourselves to the neurotypical standard. We say, well, I'm doing exactly what those neurotypicals are doing. Why are they happy and I'm not? See back to uh, number two. Because you silence the voice and then you compare yourself to the neurotypical standard, you're in a um, in a dragon eating its own tail type situation, a never ending loop of just despair and discouragement because you're doing something that doesn't feel right to get something that doesn't feel right and are surprised when it doesn't work out right. It just it's not meant to be. You were not supposed to live to that standard and stick to that standard you are supposed to, we are supposed to live outside of that standard, using it to accomplish our bigger, better dreams. We are supposed to be uncommon among men, creating, creating for one, um, thinking up new ideas, breaking boundaries, just changing the world. But we are complacent. And instead, we are falling in line, doing the work of cogs in the system. That's not where we belong. There's a reason why it is so hard for you, because it is not meant for you. You were supposed to do more. There is a reason why you were made the way you were made. You were built different for a reason. God has something special for you. But if you don't listen to the voice inside of you, you will never be able to get it. If you keep comparing yourself to the neurotypical standard, you will never be able to get it. If you keep flying blind and operating without a plan, you will never be able to get it. And finally, if you, oh, that's not finally, sorry, if you forget the father, that's number four. You forget that there is somebody else out there who was looking out for us. You may go to church on Sunday. 
You may go to church on Wednesday as well. You may go to Bible study, but in your day-to-day -day life, you do not remember that God is out there and he is watching and he is open and available for us to reach out to and commune with anytime. Anytime, if your mind is open and it is clear and you believe in your inner voice, it is open to reach out and talk to God. But we have forgotten how to do that. We have gotten so inundated with the stories that everybody tells us about how we are, we're too much. We are, we're, you know, we're not, we're acting up. That, that report card that came home with you that said, uh, Johnny is distracting. Johnny was being distracting because Johnny was not meant to sit still. Johnny was meant to hear more and do more. Johnny was distracted because there was something better for Johnny to be doing. And Johnny forgot. Johnny forgot the father, forgot that he is able to commune with a higher power. He forgot because he, once again, started comparing himself to the neurotypical standard. He'd silenced the voice and he's fly, he flew blind. He forgot that there was supposed to be dreams that he was moving towards. He just started showing up and doing the same thing without any goal in mind. And then finally, now it's finally, number five, you do it alone. You think that you can do everything by your damn self, and you cannot. You cannot. As special as you are, you are also limited in your capacity. The, the person who created the problems that you're currently in does not have the capacity to find the solutions. You need help. You need help, and that help needs to come, unfortunately, through a major trauma that is going to massively shift your mindset. That's how it went down for me. Or you're going to ask for help and you're going to help somebody who shifts that mindset so you can break the frame of your current stories and see the new possibility. Or you are going to do so much damn research that is, it is unavoidable. It is absolute that you must expand your capacity because you were just going to work so hard that you were going to brute force it and you were going to be able to see that new possibility. That last one, it's completely possible. But it is so freaking hard. It is so hard. Unfortunately, the easiest, cheapest, well, it was cheap for me, but it could have been the most expensive thing that ever happened, was to have a traumatic incident happen, which completely changes your life. That life or that, that traumatic change could be the thing that cost you everything. I was lucky enough to have that experience to almost lose my wife, almost lose my children, almost lose everything. And be able to save it because I heard the voice. I started listening to myself. I started digging out and I started doing all the things I just said. I stopped flying blind. I stopped silencing the voice. I stopped comparing myself to the neurotypical standard. I started remembering the father and that there was something higher than me. And I stopped trying to do it alone. I asked for help. I reached out and I said, I don't know how to do what it is I need to do. I'm willing to pay to get out of this situation. It was really hard. It was terrifying. But the moment I was willing to submit to something outside of myself, to submit to God's will and say that there is, I can't solve this problem alone. God, please help me. God provided a path, said that you're going to have to sacrifice. It is going to cost you some money. I trusted and believed. And as, as soon as I made that commitment, everything started changing for me. And the same can happen for you. If you are hearing this and you are feeling that movement in your heart and the bottom of the, you know, in the, the nape of your neck where your brain pulls on your spine and it's telling you to move, that is God's way of saying it's time to make a new move. It's time to stop doing it your way. It's time to ask for help. It is time to expand your capacity. It is time to stop doing it by yourself. Ask for help. Expand. It's time. You can ask for my help by going to take the Aimless Life Assessment linked in the description, and it'll get you started on a path for me to be able to help you. I'll talk to you tomorrow.